A long range three pointer with seven seconds remaining in the regional final has Centerville's Elks roaming in the state's final four for the first time in school history. Menor has been flying high all season. The Cardinals are Ohio's lone unbeaten team trying to complete a perfect dream season. Menor in Centerville for a spot in the big school state title game right now on Spectrum News 1. Four teams are still dreaming of a big school state championship this year. Two of them, Menor and Centerville, will meet in this first semifinal game. Hello, everybody, and welcome inside the University of Dayton Arena, along with my partner, Dave Scooty. I'm Dave Bacon. Spectrum News 1, state semifinals for Division 1. And, Dave, we have a limited number of spectators. We have a great venue. It should be a great atmosphere for these semis. It will, and I think we have two terrific matchups. The first one going to counter each other. The Elks, a younger team, mentor, built on seniors, very veteran club. The second matchup, Dave, a very, very good two athletic teams. Westerville Central is going to push the ball. The defensive prowess, St. Ignatius, will be on hand. And here is uh, that bracket and how it lays up. Winner of this one gets the winner of St. Ignatius, Westerville Central. Kind of interesting. Westerville Central and Centerville both making their first ever appearance in a state Final Four. And when you talk about Centerville, a dramatic win to get here. It was a 24-footer from three-point range that got it done. And it's a guy that we're going to talk about a lot tonight, Tom House. No question. And a 6'6 junior, Tom House. He hit the 24-footer with six seconds remaining in that ball game. But, but keep this in mind, outside shooting is one of his good ports, but he could go on the inside and hurt you as well. When you talk about the Menor Cardinals, I touched on it. They're the only team in Ohio that is unbeaten heading into these semifinals. They have scored 90 points or better 12 times this year. They beat Medina by 10 in the regional finals. And the guy that makes the Cardinals offense go is guard Luke Chacon. Well, this is a high-paced team, and this young man right here, the senior, Luke Chacon, a Youngstown State signee, he puts this team on his shoulders. He will be a target for their defense. Be interesting to see how he responds. One spot in the state finals will be decided right here. It's Menor and Centerville starting line at tip-off. Straight ahead on Spectrum News 1. On average, we spend up to 240 minutes every day surfing, streaming, gaming, and connecting. And having the right data plan matters. So why limit yourself with the competition? Spectrum helps you stay connected on your terms and on your budget with free nationwide talk and text, including Canada, Mexico, and beyond. All with no added taxes, no hidden fees, and no contracts. Wait, really? Yeah, really. Switch to Spectrum Mobile today. Call 855-655-2363. Plus, Spectrum Mobile lets your family mix and match data plans to meet everyone's needs, with data plans starting at just $14 per gig. And, unlike the competition, you don't have to get multiple lines to get our best price. That's great. Yeah, it is. Save up to 40% every month. Join the millions of customers who have switched to Spectrum Mobile. Get connected today with data plans starting at just $14 a gig, all with no contracts. Go to SpectrumMobile.com. Use the Spectrum Mobile Savings Calculator to see how much you can save and to find a store near you. Or call 855-655-2363 and we'll calculate your savings for you. The OHSAA State Basketball Championships on Spectrum News 1 are presented by Mercy Health, the official health care provider of the OHSAA. By Chocolate Milk. Ohio students are built by Chocolate Milk. And by the Spectrum News app, your community connection. Download at the App Store or Google Play. From the University of Dayton Arena, we're about to get Division I state semis underway. Let's take a look at the five on the floor. We begin with the Centerville Elks tonight's starting lineup. Brought to you by the American Dairy Association. Ohio students are built by chocolate milk. Chocolate milk, the official beverage of the OHSAA. Gabe Cups, a sophomore, is a outstanding point guard. 4.7 assist to one turnover ratio. That's getting it done. You see good length up front for the Elks. When you look over at the Mentor Cardinals, we've already talked about Luke Chacon. Another guy that is a key, Andrew Smith. Big guy inside, 6'6". Six, six. He's going to need to get it done inside. And uh, a nice job as well by Jonah Wag. Um, 
scoring 18 a game in a secondary role to scoring to Luke Chacon. Keys to the game are brought to you by Mercy Health, the official health care provider of the OHSAA. Go to mercy.com for more information and locations. Take it away, Dave Sicuti. Well, Dave, I think the first thing for Centerville, they have to make sure they got their defensive assignments ready to go. They got some tough matchups. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Embrace the roles. They've done it all year. Do it again tonight. For Mentor, the Cardinals, volume scoring. They can put some points on the board, but they need to have those attempts in play. And the Chacon effect. He's going to put this team on their back. He has done it all year long. Can he do it again here in the semifinal game? We're about set to get the semifinals underway. A great atmosphere, a great arena, the University of Dayton Arena. And it will be Trey Johnson and Andrew Smith jumping center, and we're underway. The Elks control it, and bodies hitting the floor immediately. And Jonah Wag whistled for a foul away from the ball. Well, that was a little unusual right there to get it right off of it. A tip right there. The quick foul, Dave. I just was a little surprised right there. Just got tangled up. That's a good look at Bob Krasancic, head coach of the Mentor Cardinals, his 27th year at Mentor. And um, there you see his record with the Cardinals. They won a state championship under Coach Krasancic. Good patience in the half court. Rebounding is going to be key for the Cardinals. Good take inside by Cups, and he'll kick it back out. Knocks down the three ball. Guess who? Tom House. Well, we talked about Tom House in the opener. He can do that. You have to locate him in a hurry. Attacking, rebound, putting it up and putting it in is Stephen Key. Way to keep after it by Stephen Key. Gets the put back. Both teams, Dave starting out in their man-to-man -man defense. We'll keep an eye on a couple key matchups as this game unfolds. Cups pulls up, knocks mm. it down. Good looking shot by the sophomore, Gabe Cups. 15.8 points a game, knocks down his first shot. A little token pressure here from the Elks. Coast to coast won't go, good rebound. Pulled down by Rich Rolf. And here comes Cups into the offensive end. Rolf defended nicely, tips it up again, gets it back, and still can't get it to go. This time Chacon deflects it to a teammate and gets it back. But you see the offensive rebounding by the Elks. They're long and athletic inside. Three ball, won't go down, rebound run down by Tom House. House, good ball handler on the perimeter as well. They really have almost four or five guys can handle the ball. Their motion offense, a lot of movement, a lot of cutting, a lot of screening. Manuel Dang kicks it out, House. Good look at the three back of the iron. And a good job of boxing out that time by Wag. Yeah, Wag did a nice job, a senior. Known for his outside shooting. That time he did a nice job on the boards. Cardinals trying to get that spacing in the half court that they like where they can use some of that quickness and speed. Chacon kicks it out, open look. Rebound grab by House. Good look, Rolf inside. Knocked away by Chacon. Transition, key. Smith hustling gets the rebound and will get the foul whistled on Rolf. And here's a good look at the Centerville head coach. Brooke Cups, he is the dad of that point guard we keep talking about, Gabe Cups. And he and Krasancic, Coach Krasancic, know each other well. Well, it's an interesting dynamic anytime you coach your son. Uh, you're almost tougher <laughs> on your son than you are any other your, your players on the roster. Here's the inbounds play right here. This time it looked like the Elks kind of went to a 2-3 zone on the out-of-bounds play. Good help by Dang on Chacon. Crossover. Good look. Smith. 
can't hit the three. Rebound gathered for Centerville by Ryan Kiefer, who has checked in. Good drive. Follow won't go. Good attacking of the offensive glass by Tom House, and that's something the Elks do well. Well, we talked a little bit before the game, Dave, about the offensive rebounding that this team does. They're averaging over 10 offensive rebounds on the season, so you know they're going to continue to go to the glass, and this young man right here at the free throw line is going to be one of those guys to get his second and third efforts on the glass. Tom House, an 85% free throw shooter on the year, knocks down that first one. And he gets both of them. Five-point lead for Centerville. Chacon with the crossover. Cups knocks it out of bounds. Still will be Menor basketball, but good hands in the passing lane by Gabe Cups. Well, number four, Kip is in the game right now, and he's drawing that matchup on Chacon. Uh, Chacon's going to see three or four different guys with the turn over there, but Dave, they're going to see three or four different guys on him just to kind of keep him off balance. He's a rhythm type of player, trying to keep him in check. Substitution coming in for the Elks, as that is Quinn Hafner. Quinn Hafner checking in. He'll give Dang a breather, and likely Hafner will be on Luke Chacon. You're going to get tired, Garden. Menor's number two. Nice back cut, good pass, and converted by Cups. Great look to the cutting Cups by Ryan Keeper. Three ball, off the mark, rebound, and in transition. They'll kick it out. It ends up with House, the three won't go. Rolf trying to keep it alive, it's gathered by Chacon. Well, the Elks are not bashful. They're gonna try to push the ball in transition, get their shots. Chacon didn't have much room, can't get it to go, rebound. Rolf. Cups will slow it down a little. Very little. <laughs> There's a three that rims <laughs> out for Rolf and a rebound grab. And they get it right back to Rolf. The 15-footer rolls in. A nine-point Centerville lead, 11-2, as the Elks have come out knocking down shots. There's a switch right there on the perimeter right there. Chacon, that's his third or fourth defender he's seen. He's a driving kick guy as well. That time they can't get it to go. Color can't get it, rebound grab. A good job as Wag keeps it alive. Now a nice lot, nice drive, and Stephen Key will get the layup. Much needed basket for the Cardinals. Well, Key's an explosive player off the dribble. They're gonna have to make sure they contain him. Hafner eyes the three, all over it. Rebound off the rim and gathered by Menner, but again, the Elks crashing the boards. Get a foul whistle against Centerville. Well, keep in mind, Dave, the Menther average is close to 86 points per game, so, you know, well below their average right now, but it's, again, you'll see the penetration right here. Again, just an explosive action. Quick foul, good call by the official. Ian Kipp checks in for Menner. That is a, a name that High school football fans will remember quarterback for the Cardinals football team is going to Kent State to play football. And uh, on the basketball court, he does a lot of the dirty work. He'll do the rebounding and the defense. Great defense right there is keeping it alive for the steal as Hafner and he gets it off. Centerville Elks defense uh, getting it done early. House on the drive, puts it in. Tom House. Making a call to Dayton. He now has seven to lead all scores. Well, great body control right there. Three ball won't go. And uh, this time, a couple of Elks crashing the boards, and it goes off of them. It will be Menor uh, possession. But if you're Centerville coach, you take that. Absolutely. I'd rather have three guys going after the ball than watching. Well, we talked a little bit about how they <clears throat> have to embrace their roles a little bit. They're going to play eight or nine folks. That's for sure when you think about the Centerville X. So 
everybody's going to be in the game. They know what they need to do. They built this team on understanding their roles. Chacon, three ball, gets fouled. Three free throws coming. Cups will get whistled for the foul. That's one of those you really don't want to foul a three-point shooter, but again, right now, Chacon's having a tough time finding his rhythm. That time, they got a pretty good contact right there, an opportunity here to get going here with three free throws. Makes the first one. Chacon shoots a high percentage, and he shoots plenty of these free throws. 98 of 121 on the season. Knocks down the second. Couple of subs as it'll be Rolf coming back in. And also checking in is Jason Hayes for his first action. So Rolf and Hayes back in for the Elks. You know, Dave, we talked about embracing roles. Hayes, if you remember a year ago, he started on this basketball team. This year he's bought into the fact that he's going to come in. He's going to be kind of that role player, that sixth, seventh, eighth guy off the bench. I think what the officials are doing right now, one of these players, I think, it's has Chacon. Some, Chacon Chacon has blood, blood on his elbow. elbow. Yeah, he does. Gotta get that cleaned up here. Well, let's take a look. As uh, you see, Mentor, that state title I alluded to under Coach Krasancic, 2013, three Final Four appearances. And as we touched on, the first ever state Final Four appearance for Centerville. If the Alps are the slightest bit um, in awe of the big stage, it hadn't showed in this first 6-10 of this first quarter. They've come out ready to go. Yeah, we talked a little bit as you see the huddle there for Mentor, but for Centerville, you're right, Dave. I mean, they're not bashful. They're going to get their shots off. That comes with confidence, of course, and, and being able to understand that, you know, once you get to the final four, your confidence is at an all-time high. You know, you're going to play like that, and you're not going to change your style at all. So Chacon trying to convert the third of free th three free throws and cut this to a six-point lead. You can see there they kind of wrapped that right elbow up a little yep. bit. Didn't affect that free throw. His first three points of the game. And, and to illustrate how good Centerville's defense has been, Chacon's only taken two shots. And he got fouled on one of them. You know, they're keeping him off balance. It'll be something to kind of watch, see if he can get his rhythm in this game. Again, you see the half-court offense is very good for Centerville. A lot of cutting, a lot of kicking out. Good defense to Cone, and he knocks it off of Rolf. Good defense by Menner to create the turnover, trying to cut into this six-point Centerville lead. Well, Menner's only given up about 58 points per game this season, so... They've been solid at the defensive end. You'll see the drive right here. Good help. Again, good help defense. Got three of those mentor Cardinals there ready to help. Chacon working against Dang, who checked back in to defend him. A lot of switching here defensively for the Elks. Chacon trying to get in the lane, kicks it out. Good hands, in, and it's a turnover. Hands in the passing lane. Elks have been doing it for the better part of this first quarter. Cups, kicks, three ball. Rolf rims out, rebound, gathered. Another offensive rebound. It was Hayes that time, but it's turned over. Three off the front of the rim by Key, and it is grabbed by Gabe Cups, who will now slow it down. Elk likely gonna take the final shot of this first quarter, a first quarter where they have been in control most of it, as men are just two of 12 from the field, have not made a three-pointer in seven attempts. Well, Cups is gonna handle the ball most of the time right here as this clock winds down to about 12 seconds. He'll have in his hands a little penetrating pitch. You'll see four players kind of widen out on the baseline, looking for if he doesn't get the shot, someone's going to be wide open. Cups in the lane, puts it in. Gabe Cups going to work and doing a nice job. He has six, and it is a 15-7 lead. The Centerville Elks leading the Mentor Cardinals at the end of the first quarter. Take a look at the sophomore going to work.
Put a CRV in your garage for $239 a month. 2021 CRVs, $239 a month. Or save thousands with 0% financing. Don't miss Honda's Dream Garage Spring Event. Search your local Honda dealer today. Sunday mornings, take an in-depth look at your community. In Focus with Mike Kallmeyer, a half-hour show dedicated to the important issues. Driven to bring decision makers together and committed to elevating discussion and debate. Your community, your state, your show. In Focus with Mike Kallmeyer, Sunday mornings at 1030 on Spectrum News 1. Also available on the Spectrum News app. What is happening? We were supposed to be there 20 minutes ago. Honey, we need to know the directions first. What do you want me to do? It's not working. All you gotta do is turn it off and turn it on again. Ask someone for directions. I don't have to ask somebody. I have a phone that talks to satellites and it comes back down. You know what? I'm gonna call Leslie. Call Leslie? Without the right connection, you've got nothing. Open map app. So Spectrum Mobile delivers the fastest overall speeds and most reliable service to keep you connected coast to coast. Get a Honda SUV with 0% financing. This, this, and this is 0%. Get SUV payments from $159 a month or $1,000 customer cash. Don't miss Honda's Dream Garage Spring Event. Search your local Honda dealer. Now you can take Spectrum News 1 with you anywhere you go. Download the Spectrum News app on your favorite device or tablet and watch 24-7. You can get the latest news and weather with the Spectrum News app. Go to SpectrumNewsApp.com to learn more about the app and download it if you haven't already done so. Second quarter action and the Mender Cardinals uh, trying, to, trying to find their range from the field. Two of 12 in that first quarter, 0 of 7 from behind the arc. And a lot of that is the defense. And, Centerville switching it up a little bit now. Absolutely, here to start that second quarter, going to that 2-3 matchup zone. Again, trying to keep that Metter offense in check, keeping them off balance, especially the gentleman with the ball right there, Luke Chacon. Good ball movement. Thought about the three. Good patience by the Cardinals, trying to get a good look at a shot. A lot of switching now, the man to man. How about the deflection there? Rolf picked up with the ball there. Rolf Rich, the 6'7 junior. Baseline move and a nice basket. Taking it inside from Jason Hayes. Pushes the lead to double figures. Hayes comes in, chips in with about five points, about three rebounds a game. Chacon can't hit the long three. Dang will grab the rebound. Centerville's been the aggressor here thus far in the first and the start of this second quarter, really pushing the ball, pushing it right at that mentor defense. Elks have been very patient in the half court when they haven't had the run. There's the three. House can't get it to go. Rolf crashing. They just get hands on those offensive rebounds. There is not an easy rebound. A foul whistled against Centerville. Well, that's a teachable skill right there. You got to anticipate where that ball's coming off. And you'll see they're going to keep it active. Once that ball goes up, they're going to try to get that second, that third effort. Back to that man to man. Chacon drawing a tough assignment. Kip all over him. Not even going to let him breathe. It's going to be a sticky defense right now. Chacon working against Dang. The drive dishes. Good defense as that was a tough shot. Great defense by Emmanuel Dang. Cups pushing. Good decision by Dang to give it up and kick it out. I like the patience at certain points. They're going to be aggressive. That guy especially. Charge. That was one of those 50-50 deals, and you, you can live with that if you are the coach. Great aggressive tank. Well, let's take a look right there. Good job both at the offensive end, but the defense going to get the advantage right there. Standing in there and taking it right at the chest. Good look, Dave Cups. 
That's the second personal foul on Cup, so he will sit down, and, and he has been very good. Six points. Let's see how the Centerville offense runs without their yeah, talented sophomore point we're gonna guard. Going to mark this point in the game right now because losing him right now for a few minutes or maybe the rest of the half will be a key factor. Again, good aggressive defense. Kicking it out. Three ball, rims out. Cardinals still have not knocked down a triple. Now 0 of 9 from behind the arc to start this game. There's the patience right there mm -hmm. from Centerville. But it's not, you know, they're they're trying to attack and Absolutely. When it's not there. They're they're making good decisions. Good ball reversal. How about the cut there by Dang? Good hands Excellent by Wag. Cut. Yep. Both these teams are well schooled. They've had a week to prepare. Scatter reports probably overemphasized at some point during the course of the week, but you try to find out what both these teams are doing. This time on an out of bounds play. Coming up at halftime, a check of the latest news and weather with Lindsey Oliver and Andrew Kozak from the Spectrum News One Studios. We still have 450 to go in this second quarter. And it has been all Centerville in the first quarter plus. Again, great spacing, good patience. Aggressive take, defended by Chacon. Probably had 12, 14 passes thus far. Good hustle, Kip dives. It will still be Centerville basketball. Good hustle, but Kip couldn't come up with the loose ball. Ran out of court there, did well, Ian Kip. By design, offensively, good passing, crisp passing, good cuts. Trying to get the defense to go from side to side wears on you a little bit defensively, Dave. If you're a mentor, you gotta stay disciplined here with your defensive fundamentals. Good pass inside, and then Kip helps, knocks it out. So midway through this second quarter, 17-7, Centerville leading mentor. The game being played at Centerville's pace, mm -hmm. quite honestly. Shot over the rim, Breedy. Kenny can't grab it, it comes to Chacon in transition. Rolf will gather it. Foul whistled against the Menor Cardinals. You know, again, you're talking about the ability to just come up with loose balls, there's the foul right there, but you know, at this point, Dave, Mentor offensively just maybe a touch too quick. Yeah, they've you sped know, them up. They're yeah. having a tough time kind of keeping control of the basketball. Passes are a little bit off. Sometimes you just got to settle down a little bit. You know, to take it even a step further, they haven't had many good looks at the rim. Exactly. That time they showed a little full court pressure, trying to change the dynamic of this game a little bit. Only seven points. Legal screen whistled out front. They got Rolf for that. That'll be his second. Sixth team foul. So that will bring Trey Johnson back into the game. So Rolf and Cups both with two fouls. Still 3.38 to go in this first. And I, I, I delineated how many times Menor has scored over 90 points. 12 this year. They have seven with 3.30 left in this first half. It's kind of one of those nightmare yeah. situations that you just hope never happens in a big semifinal game like this. Chacon can't knock down the three, and I think we're gonna get an offensive foul whistled underneath against Ryan Kiefer. Displaced the Cardinal did the uh, center bill out. Should be a one-on-one one one situation, situation here. Yeah. 
I think this is probably a good thing for Mentor right now, just to kind of slow things down, an opportunity to get to the free throw line, catch their breath, trying to find a way to manufacture some points right now. There's a good look at Stephen Key, 6'2 senior. Rims out. Can't connect on the front end of the one and one. Hayes with the rebound. They thought about uh, bringing Gabe Cubs back in. They put him back uh, on the bench. So well, he'll sit a little longer. Yeah, I think this, as long as they can keep this margin, Dave, I think he'll probably be willing to sit him and little sloppy that time by House. Tried to go behind the back. Wag attacking. Too aggressively charged. Lowered the shoulder, and if you do that, it's going to get called 80% of the time just on the fact that you lower your shoulder. Let's take a look here. This we talked about just a little too quick, a little too aggressive. Great defense, but again, sometimes you got to know when to pull up, take that little mid-range jumper instead of trying to get it all the way to the basket. And Gabe Cups will check back in. So pretty much the same deficit, the, the same margin as when he right. went to the bench. Well, there's a little full court tra trap pressure right here. Kip I think this is a great it. idea right now for the Cardinals just to kind of find something that might work here, kind of leaning on their defense a little bit. You should take a look, Coach Cups. They run Gabe Cups down long, and Chacon outruns him to the basketball. Good hustle by Luke Chacon. Good closeouts here yeah. on the defensive end. Chacon kicks again. There's the three ball. Good look. Front of the rim. And a nice job boxing out by Trey Johnson. So Centerville gets the rebound. Traveling violation. Switched his pivot foot. You know, a couple turnovers in a row. At this point in the game for Centerville, you want to make sure you maintain possession of the ball, get some good looks and opportunities. Well, it's to the point with Mentor, you, you want to weather this. You yes, find absolutely. Out, can, you, can you get it down to six? Yep. And then you feel really good. Yep. Because you really haven't played well. We know they haven't shot it well. Chacon, again, really nice defensive closeout by Hafner. They are helping very well on Chacon, are the Elks. Open three, knocked down, big three ball for Kyle Culler. Foul on Ian Kipp. Lots of substitutions. Rolf will come back in. Gray, Kale Gray checks in for Menor. Good hands defensively, the steal. And the bucket, Stephen Key with the big D. Five quick points have cut it to a five-point deficit for Menor. Yeah, nice job by Key, and this time, again, a timeout. Got to come here from Coach Cups. It's a great timeout. This Absolutely. is what Menor does. They string baskets yep. together, and, and it gets to be a snowball rolling downhill at you awfully quick. Well, let's take a look right here. You'll see the deflection here by Key. Does a good job getting his hands on the ball, a little body control, nice finish at the basket. Maybe that could ignite this team a little bit here with only a very short period, one minute and seven seconds here in the second quarter, but they, they need some help right now, and their defense has to be the ones that does it. And really the first sign of life, these last two possessions that we've seen from Menor in this first half. You know, they, they're fortunate the way they played, they're fortunate to be down only by five. Yep. I mean, uh, and that's a scary thing if you're Centerville. That's right. And that discussion at halftime is going to be interesting. 
for Memphis. They got to know that they got to get in there and handle themselves and they come out here in the second half ready to go. Gabe Cup's going to handle the ball here as this quarter winds down. Good look inside, Rolf. They swing it, open look. Hafner knocks down the three. Quinn Hafner answers with the triple. Lead back to eight. Good aggressive take inside, but unable to finish his key. Inside, there's the bucket. There's your senior, Trey Johnson. Yep, he answers. So Great just shot like fake. that, five straight for Centerville, back to 10. Great shot fake and a finish right there. 15 on the clock here. Chacon's gonna have the ball in his hands, no question about that. Little high ball screen. Three-pointer, Gray puts it in to beat the buzzer. How about Kale Gray comes in off the bench, knocks down the three, so at the end of the first half of basketball, the Centerville Elks 22, the Menor Cardinal 15. Here's a look at that final shot. Kale Gray plays beat the clock, and he wins. giving 65% at School Picture Day, which makes his mom give a complacent sigh every time she passes the mantle. But thanks to the confident smile he received from his Smile Doctors team, Colby's mom can finally order Package Q, the mega pack she's been dreaming of. Don't just smile, smile happy. guys doing? We're hunting for dinosaurs. Like those? Upgrade to a new Kubota tractor, Zero Turn, or RTV from Green & Sons. We have a huge selection of Kubotas for you to choose from. Stop in or visit us online today. Fast, friendly service at prehistoric prices. Only at Green & Sons. Come see us today. Public health and political leaders struggle to find ways to convince black Americans and other affected groups that the vaccine is safe. Experts say the mistrust can be seen in the lack of diversity among vaccine trial participants. I felt the need to do something. For Rose Strickland, she did what she knew she could and encouraged her children to participate too. Watch Exploring Your Health Vaccine Reluctance on the Spectrum News app. Find the episode in the Exploring Your Health section and check out the coronavirus section for local updates and vaccine information. Happy Saturday. We hope you're enjoying our live coverage of the OHSA Boys Basketball Tournament. I'm Lindsay Oliver. Now your halftime news and weather update. March is Problem Gambling Awareness Month. Experts warn about the dangers of everything from betting on the NCAA tournament to getting carried away at the slot machines or craps tables. The Problem Gambling Network of Ohio specializes in helping problem gamblers find help and get back on the right track. The easiest way to kind of determine whether or not you go from gambling for fun to um, a problem is just, are you still having fun? Because if gambling is no longer fun, then that's a pretty good indicator that maybe you need to take a break. Experts say almost 10% of people anywhere are at risk of developing a gambling disorder. You can find resources online at pgnohio.org. 
For a second straight day, pandemic air travel hits a new high. More than 1.4 million people were screened at U.S. airports Friday, according to the TSA. That represents the biggest day for air travel in more than a year. Previous records for pandemic flying came Thursday and the previous Friday. This new high also represents a ninth day of more than a million daily passengers. This surge comes as the federal health officials are still cautioning against traveling. Oh, today is the first day of spring and we are in for a great weather weekend for a look at what we can expect. Here's meteorologist Ashley Beatty. Hey there, I hope you're enjoying the games here on Spectrum News 1. I'm meteorologist Andrew Kozak with a quick look at your halftime weather as we head into your Saturday night and Sunday. Not only mild again on Sunday, but we're getting into warm territory with temperatures really starting to, well, not only get back up into the 60s, but even for a couple of you, close to 70 before the weekend and even Monday is up. Now, overnight it will be chilly, especially as we head into the early part of your Sunday. Clear skies, light winds, it's a recipe for us to fall back down into the low 30s. Look how quickly we warm up, though. We're back into the 50s by noon on Sunday. Full sunshine once again. Hardly a cloud to be found. Most of us back into the low to even middle 60s, though, by the time we get into your Sunday afternoon. We're going to see the breezes kicking up just a little bit between 5 and 10 miles per hour overnight and about 15 to 25 by Sunday afternoon. Overnight lows look like this, about 32 in Columbus, 33 in Cleveland, 33 in Cincinnati. High temperatures, they're back into the 60s with lots of sun all day long. Keep it here on Spectrum News 1. We'll get you back to the start of the second half in just a few minutes. And coming up after the game. That was kind of her mantra, chucks and pearls. And so we wanted to turn it into something very tangible. Strong women supporting their community. How a Central Ohio group is supporting local businesses while paying tribute to the Vice President of the United States. That story and much more after the game. But first, we're going back to the UD Arena for the second half of the Division I state semifinal game between Centerville and Menor. We'll see you after the game. Sports betting, lottery, or online gaming? If so, it's important to know that gambling is a form of entertainment, not a form of income. Being an adult takes a lot of brain power, big or small. You're making decisions constantly. Life can be complicated, but responsible gambling doesn't have to be. Gauge your risk for problem gambling and take the quiz at BeforeYouBet.org. And if you know someone who needs help, call 1-800-589-9966. This has been a message from Ohio for responsible gambling. There's always a reason to be in a new Kia from Crown Kia of Dublin. Kia has what you need to fit every lifestyle. Need big cargo space? Kia has it. State-of-the-art technology? Kia has it. Award-winning safety? Yep, Kia has that too. Did we mention Kia has better peace of mind? With a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty? Need one more reason to choose Kia? A better buying experience at Crown Kia of Dublin. The better way to buy. This is the Jones family. We have a good deal on our wireless plan. Are you sure? Spectrum Mobile can do better. How many lines do you have? Four. And how much data do you use? Grandma and I email and text, but these two share and stream tons of videos. And how much are you paying per month? Don't forget those added taxes and fees and surcharges. Oh, then $220. Spectrum Mobile lets you customize your plans. You and Grandma can be in our Buy the Gig plan with shareable data, and your wife and daughter can be in our unlimited data plan. Offer $118 per month with no taxes and fees. Spectrum Mobile has the best data plans for your family. All plans include unlimited talk and text with no contracts. See? I proved you could save within minutes. Now it's your turn. Grab your bill and see how much you can save. Visit SpectrumMobile.com slash YouSave to calculate your savings in three easy steps. Or call us at 1-833-295-7283 and we'll do it for you. The OHSAA State Basketball Championships on Spectrum News 1 are presented by the new Spectrum News app. Informing, empowering, and connecting you to your community. Download in the App Store or Google Play. By Chocolate Milk, Ohio students are built by Chocolate Milk. And by Mercy Health, the official health care provider of the OHSAA. University of Dayton Arena is the place. It's great to have fans back in in high school basketball. Our first of two semifinal games in Division I. 
And you see Centerville with that seven-point lead. First half highlights. And uh, David was house with seven in that first half. A great offense by Centerville. Well, he got it started. But Jason Hayes, the senior, got it a nice finish there. How about the skip pass out? Half got one to go there. Menner struggle, but late in that half, Color hits the three. They get defense, and they get another three ball just before the half. Well, I thought this was a key play of the game here for Menner. A nice little steal there. A finish got that team going. And here's that last shot of the quarter to try to cut that lead. Got it down to seven. And, and when you look at the stats, Menner shooting basically 23%. Uh, Centerville 45%. So Centerville has six assists on nine made baskets. You see the points and the paint and the rebound. Centerville's getting it done inside. Menner has to find a way to stop that a little bit. Well, the, I guess the conversation at halftime for Menner is trying to find a way to get their offense on track a little bit. Right now, they've done a good job as you take a look at Luke Chacon there. Averaging 22.7 on the season. Only three tonight, but let's give the credit to the Elks defense. Yes. They've switched it up, kept him off balance. But Luke Chacon's too good a player. He's got 16 minutes right now in the second half trying to find a way to get this team on track offensively. Yeah, Centerville has not allowed him to get really good looks at the basket. No transition buckets. A lot of the things that he is good at, uh, they have taken away. So let's see what Menner has devised to get their player of the year from the inland district uh, rolling here you know but the Elks have done a good job offensively especially in that first quarter good patience good a good spacing overall they keep their spacing gives a lot of opportunities for cuts to the basket gets that defense from side to side we've seen this nice patient offense a lot of cutting some passing looking for that open look are the Elks And there it is. Dang finds house inside. Right on target, and that's what we talked about. The patience, the spacing, the excellent passing. House now with nine, leading scorer in the ball game, and that Centerville lead is back to nine. Cohen again, trying to free himself up. Dang again, defensively is all over him. Open look, the three ball rims out. It was a good look for Color, who knocked down that three in the first quarter. Rolf inside. Oh. Rolf initiated the contact. A good job taking the charge by Noah Wag. Well, we talked about the ability as we watch here, the ability to pull up for your shot that time. Rolf got himself a little bit tangled up, got too far to the basket. If you just pull up, young players have a tough time understanding that concept. And uh, as he moves on only a junior, he'll start to learn a little bit about how defenses are going to try to play. And you pull up, hit that mid-range jumper. That's his third foul, so he heads to the bench, 6.38 to go in the third. Elks are doing a nice job of closing out on the Cardinals defensively. Smith gathers it, but again, that pass was not yeah, every, easy, easily caught. Exactly. Every pass is an adventure right now. Yeah, they're contested. I think, you know, credit the defense. There's the three, Chacon, rims out, rebound, gathered. And they really haven't had an opportunity, Dave. Mentor has it. Offensive rebounds have not been active at all. They've just gotten one and done opportunities. And when you're not knocking down your threes and shooting that low percentage, that really plays not into your favor. Cups pulls up 16 footer. He knocks it down. Cups. Gabe Cups now eight. Cups is best off the dribble, as you saw right there, even in the first half. Does a good job with two rhythm dribbles right into his jumper. 11-point lead for Centerville, and a turnover. House grabs it. Little give and go back to Cups, throws wow, it in. Yeah. He is special when he gets ahead of steam going in the open court. Double figures for the sophomore, Gabe Cups. Yeah. 
They listed him at 6'2", but he's got some long arms. There's Chacon trying to get himself on track there with that outside three. Couldn't get it to go. House brings it into the forecourt, a 13-point Centerville lead. Chacon defending Dang. And the foul will be whistled on Chacon. Good drive by Dang. Yeah, Dang did a nice job in sophomore right there. Just kind of controlling the ball, forcing the action. Take a look right here. Easy call for the officials right there. Chacon just reached in. Thank for Luke Chacon right now. There's so much time remaining in this game is, is not to get too frustrated right now. They inbound it quickly, another rebound, and putting it back in is Trey Johnson, keeper on the dish. It is a 15-point lead, 30 to 15. Foul whistled against Centerville. Quinn Hafner whistled for the foul. Fourth team foul on Centerville. Here comes Ian Kipp. Cardinals trying to get some offense. Tough time even getting the ball in bounds off that out of bounds from underneath right there. Wag. Three ball. There Knocked down. Stephen Key with the big three. Quick timeout right there. It's going to be a 30-second timeout. Take a look right here. The penetration, the pitch. Got a nice look there. The other thing that you notice, though, is there's three Cardinals kind of surrounding the ball. And the thought is make the Cardinals knock down those threes to beat us. Yep. And so far it's worked as men are just three of 17 from behind the arc. You take a look at Stephen Key, what he's done tonight, what hasn't showed up there is kind of what he's done defensively as well. Try to ignite this team a little bit, try to make something happen. Men are only shooting 23% from the field. That number, Dave, is gonna have to kind of rise a little bit if they're gonna put themselves in a position in this state semifinal game to move on and find a way to get some points on the board. You saw Key was four of nine. The rest of the Cardinals are two of 17. Kip with the foul. Good dish by Cups inside, and Trey Johnson was fouled. He'll be shooting two. This is something you work on every day in practice. Three on two. You make the quick bounce pass right there, right to the basket again. Those little things, fundamentally right now, the Elks are doing the things well at both ends of the floor. Johnson knocks down the first free throw. Five in the game for Johnson. Now you gotta appreciate Trey Johnson, mentioned earlier, the senior, a starter a year ago. This time he's kinda coming in, playing a different role for this basketball team. Runs the floor well, creates a lot of space. Pretty good shot blocker at the other end as well. Makes both free throws. Metters trying to set a few more high ball screens right now, trying to free some of that guard penetration up a little bit. The Elks are... Oh, you love the emotion, though, don't you? They're, they're appealing, <laughs> but... Uh, that's not going to work, That's not going to work, no. <laughs> Never does, but got to try. You're going to see right here, just a quick pass. Good to tell if Dan got his... His fingers on that or not, but here's some trap pressure right now by Menner. I like this move right here. Cups dribbles There's out the of the turnover. Pass away. And there the bucket. Quick bucket again. That's Stephen Key. Lead back down to 10. There's hustle by Chacon. Another turnover. Long three. Rims out. Cups grabs the rebound. 
And here comes Johnson. And now Cuffs will set up the offense. Just over three minutes to go. Ten-point lead for Centerville with the ball. There's that high ball screen for the Elks now. Cups, good ball control. How about the cut there again? Talking about the ability of Trey Johnson finding the open gaps in that defense and just slicing to the basket. Take a look right here. Great job by the 6'7 senior. Good pass as well. Kyle Culler whist whistled for that foul. Third team foul on Mentor. Back of the iron for Johnson on the first one. Johnson six points, three rebounds. But you know, Dave, we saw a little flurry of action right there. I think that's what Mentor at this point in the game is going to have to do. Kind of make it a helder skelter game right now. Get in the open court, get your pressure up, try to get some easy baskets. That's probably going to be their their formula to try to get back into this basketball game. But as you mentioned, every time you look at the scoreboard, though, they're still hanging right in there. House checks back in. Foul whistled on Cups. That's going to be his third. Well, that's a developing storyline here as both Gabe Cups and Rolf now have three personal fouls for Centerville. Well, Gabe Cups going to get himself a breather right there as you see him head to the sideline. Kyle Kenny comes in. He played well in the first half. And a timeout. For Menor. 249 to go in the third. An 11 point lead for Centerville. You know, Dave, just that, that was a perfect example right there. You're on and out of bounds there for Mentor right there, and it drives coaches nuts. But that tells you how out of sync they had been all night long when you got to call, call a timeout on the out of bounds. But uh, it's just one of those things. Hopefully, they can get it back together. The rights to this broadcast have been granted by the OHSAA. Any rebroadcast or republication of the programming without the written consent of Spectrum News 1 and the OHSAA is strictly prohibited. So the shooting for both sides has improved as Centerville now shooting over 50% from the field. Dave. They're shooting 52%, 13 to 25. The Cardinals up to 28 percent but you know you know when you look at it though in contrast to Metro who's really struggling to try to find manufactured points Centerville's got Trey Johnson they're cutting the basket and getting yep. inside points in the paint and even when they look look at their threes they're pretty wide open threes and they're shooting a pretty good clip right now their half court offense has been effective and, and Mentor absolutely needs to score in transition really and there's a bad pass, dang. It will stay with Menor. And, and Coach Bozancic is giving it to the inbounder. <laughs> there's a look at head coach Brooks Cups for Centerville. Well, let's see what they can do, this possession right here. Let's see what kind of action. There's the high ball screen. See if they can get some action on the inside. They haven't had many points on the inside. Everything has either come from the perimeter or pass and kick. Key. Flag. Inside. Foul whistle. Two free throws coming. Make sure who they get on. Yep. Let's watch this little move right here. A little crossover. Strong to the basket. Those are kind of plays right now, Dave, that we're going to have to have, and then you're going to have to convert on these free throws. First one knocked down. Ten point deficit. Foul was on Kenny. Here comes Gabe Cups. Cups back in. Three fouls. Well, he's their floor general. You're in a state semifinal game and you got an outstanding guard. You're going to have to make sure you're going to get him in the game. He keeps control of things, both offensively and defensively as well. Also has 10 points for Centerville. There's that wide open, five open offense right here. Watch the pass, watch the cuts. House.
three ball. Rims in a big three by Hafner. Quinn Hafner pushes the lead back to 13. Well, Hafner's an excellent scorer. He hit two big threes in that regional stem, excuse me, final win against Archbishop Moeller to knock it down. Color the three. Rebound gathered by House. Kip whistled for the foul. Struggles continue for well, the Cardinals. And, and Centerville has a 26 to 10 advantage rebounding the basketball. And it appears to be even more dramatic than that. It does. I mean, the numbers probably don't spell it out from what we've felt and what we've seen here thus far. Hits the backboard. Men are basketball on the turnover. The pass hit the bottom of the backboard. Coach Cups is pleading his case. He thought that ball was deflected and then hit the backboard area there, but uh, no go. It's going to be men or basketball. Kale Gray checks in. He will inbound the ball, and it will be thrown deep to Luke Chacon. Charge. Yep. Yep. Stephen Key pleading his case. But I like the idea of being aggressive against Cup, but yeah. you, you lowered your shoulder. Yeah, absolutely. Excellent job defensively getting your feet set. The thought be behind being aggressive with Cups, who has three fouls, is a good one. You just can't initiate the contact. Good patience by the Elks. So it's nice to have a 6'6 a six, six player be able to handle the ball like House can in the backcourt as well. Takes a little pressure off of the Cups Wait. situation there. Doesn't have to handle it all the time. And he can see over the defense uh -huh. and pass over it as well. Here's that movement. Good look at it right here. Back screen, kind of a high motion type of offense right here. Keeps really, everybody moving. Really good spacing too. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of plenty of areas to cut that force Mentor to defend, and it almost forces you offensively to have a lot more patience in terms of taking some time off the clock as we run down this third quarter. Cups, 15 footer, can't get it to go. Tipped, but it's controlled this time by Stephen Key. Key to the hoop, draws the contact. Let's see if it's on Cups. If it's Cups, it's his fourth. Yeah, that's a, that's a time. If it is on Cups, that's when you got to pull yourself back a little bit. And it is. He was real aggressive. Watch this right here. He sticks with him. Almost got himself right there. Then he continues to go on. That's when you just take yourself out of bounds and make sure you don't pick up that fourth personal foul. When he didn't get it with his hand, he got it with his body mm -hmm. on the lower half. And Key cannot convert the first free throw. 9.5 rem remaining in the third quarter. And Centerville has been in control of this basketball game pretty much from the opening tip. Yeah, it's been obvious to us yep. sitting here watching this ball game. They've taken control from the, the get-go and haven't given it up. Jonah Wag checks back in for Menner. Oh, an errant pass. Gray grabs it. Chacon, six in the quarter. Chacon, the three, misses. And that is the end of the third quarter. We head to the fourth. The Centerville Elks in their first state semifinal with a 36-24 lead on the Menner Cardinals. Elks looking good. coronavirus continues to impact communities across all walks of life. Take a look at some of the ways our neighbors are dealing with these challenging times. 
While we are all trying to work on our social distancing, technology is keeping us together. I'm working on some weather lessons that the kiddos could watch for at home. We hope you stay with us at the State House. We are committed to bringing you the latest information on the coronavirus pandemic. This is Spectrum News One. Colby's only been giving 65% at school picture day, which makes his mom give a complacent sigh every time she passes the mantle. But thanks to the confident smile he received from his Smile Doctors team, Colby's mom can finally order Package Q, the mega pack she's been dreaming of. Don't just smile, smile happy. Welcome to the new tomorrow, where change is the challenge and innovation the opportunity. It's a place where being ready for anything is the only thing. And forward thinking is the only kind that matters. And providing that readiness and that vision is what we're built to do. Spectrum Enterprise. Still eight minutes of basketball, Centerville with a 12-point lead. Our game reset is brought to you by Raising Canes. Stop by your closest location and set up a fundraiser for your school today. Raising Canes is a proud supporter of the OHSAA. And you see it's been cups in house. Centerville has led the entire game. Menor has not led at all in this basketball game. Well, Dave, if you would have asked me before the game where I thought the numbers would be at the end of the third quarter, I surely wouldn't have thought it was 36-24. Good basket drive. and one. A good, strong take by Stephen Key. That's what Menor needs. Now they go to the line. Take try to right here the again. Point play. Talking about trying to squeeze yourself through two defenders there. The Elks, probably one of the few times they really weren't moving their feet, getting themselves in good defense position. This young man right here, he's had a, the ball in his hands a lot, taking advantage of it, got the free throw to go down. He has 15 of Menor's 27 points, does Stephen Key. That's how important he has been. Tom House checking back in for the Centerville Elks. Roll, regains, house, and one. He'll answer with his own three-point play. Tom House answers. Well, you're just gonna see excellent passing right here and a good, strong finish. Good footwork, the ability to finish, the emotion as well. Tom House, six junior. Nothing probably was better than what he accomplished in the regional final, though, Dave, to beat Cincinnati Moeller. Not too many teams get a chance to beat Moeller, and that's a memory he's going to have. If he can get by here tonight and have an opportunity to play for a state title tomorrow night, that's going to be another wonderful memory as well. But as we mentioned at the top of the telecast, Elks first time ever in the state final four. And Looking strong here in this semifinal game. Foul whistled against Centerville's Kyle Kenny. His second. Kenny has played good minutes for mm -hmm. Gabe Cups, who's been on the bench with four fouls and has been in foul trouble earlier in the first half as well. So free throws coming again. And these are going to be key for, pun not intended there, for Stephen Key. Uh, he's classified as one of their top defenders. Not a great free throw shooter. Shoots it right at 60%. But all of these right now are going to be so important for this Cardinal basketball team to get themselves right back in the game. Back of the iron. Turn into the one and one. Rebound gathered by Kiefer. Thrown away. Chacon. Puts it in, first time he's able to get anywhere near the bucket. And now another errant throw, this time run down by the Elks. Ten point lead for Centerville. And now they get that motion offense going. Mishandled pass out of bounds, it will be men or basketball. 
Well, I think what we've seen here in the last two or three possessions, Dave, is how valuable Gabe Cups is to this basketball team when he's on the floor, especially at the offensive end, handling the pressure, making the correct pass, kind of getting this basketball team into their offense. Right now, they're struggling to do that. They bring Emmanuel Dang back in, and he did handle the basketball. Let's see if they put him back at the point to try to settle things down. He's done a great job defensively. Oh, outstanding. He has been all over as he is right now. Chacon, and there's a good drive again by Key. Good dish, Kip fights it up, it won't go. Bodies flying everywhere. House pulls the rebound away for Centerville. Dang gets it to Rolf, good pass inside, and they'll kick it back out. Especially with Cups on the bench right now. A little over six minutes remaining in this ball game. And good pass on the inside. I would expect them to kind of not let the air out of the ball, but I think they just want to be a little more, probably a little more patient than they've even been during the course of the game offensively. Want to remind you, coming up after this one, we will have the other semifinal, Westerville Central. First time ever in a state final four facing St. Ignatius. It's coming up at 8 o'clock right here on Spectrum News 1 and the Spectrum News app. Rolf spins free, puts it up, and puts it in. Pretty move. How about that? Double-double machine is what he is. Chacon gets free again. He'll answer, but it's still a 10-point Centerville lead. Great passing. Oh, yeah. House. Rolf finishes. Chacon through the entire defense but can't convert. It will still be men or basketball. Smith checking back in. Dang will check back in as well. There's Andrew Smith. Manuel Dang coming in as well. And David, Menor's offense are starting to shoot the ball, starting to get some better looks, but right now they cannot afford to trade baskets. The and they clock, can't afford to yeah. turn it over as well. Clock is becoming a friend of the Elks. Rolf keeps it to Dang, and Dang puts it in. Back to a 14-point lead. Very unselfish basketball team. Always willing to give it up the extra pass. Jumper knocked down by Stephen Key. Key has come out and put 17 up for Menner. But the Elks answer. Ryan Kiefer takes it inside. Well, you attack pressure with pressure. Anytime you see some pressure, you can stay aggressive. You're going to have opportunities in the open court. Wag tried to fight up the three, was looking for the call, didn't get it. House. And they'll pull it back out. Inside of five remaining. 14-point lead for Centerville with the ball. Good patience by the Elks. No need to rush. Knocked out of bounds by Chacon. It will still be Centerville ball. Well, a lot of pressure defensively. That's your only way right now. Try to get yourselves back in this ball game somehow, some way. You got to come up with some loose balls, some steals, defensive traps. Still over four minutes to go in this semifinal game, but boy, defensively, you just got to try to do something to make things happen. One and one coming up for the Centerville Elks. Centerville shoots at almost 75% clip, which is really, really good for a high school basketball team. And I guess we haven't mentioned, Bob, we mentioned right now, a lot of people have been talking about that breakfast club. The Elks, every morning, early, early for you and I as well, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> that 6 a.m. wake up call, getting in the gym, getting your workouts in all year long, not tournament time, all year long. That's what this basketball team has done. 
Nice patience. Dang. Kicks it back out. Approaching four in this fourth quarter. Elks in control. Turnover. Tried to drill it in with the backdoor cut. Just a little too tall. So the turnover gives it back to Menner. Good move inside. Smith finishes. Well, gives you a chance to get your pressure up on those easy baskets. House can't get it to go. Foul whistled against Mentor. House has been impressive. 12 points, seven rebounds, and uh, has been a nightmare defensively. Mm -hmm. He's gotten himself freed up in a lot of different ways. We talked about it before. He's, you know, a little bit of an outside, loves to take those, those outside shots. Matter of fact, he had 12 points in the regional final, four of them, they were all threes. Tonight, he's got a little bit more on the inside as well. So a nice blend for the junior. Knocks it down. Well, that's where the advantage is for, for Centerville is because their mentors undersized and they're, they're making them pay for that. Good take inside. Stephen Keyes continues to play well as Stephen Key now 19 in the ball game. Well, they got the defense scrambling right now. You're going to see a lot of passes this possession unless you get an open shot. Good ball reversal, trying to get it from side to side. And that's, wow. that's your only alternative right now is for yep. Mentor. Some quick traps, just trying to create some havoc defensively, getting your hands on some balls and trying to get it to the other end of the floor. Down 12 here with less than, less than four. Got three minutes and 16 seconds remaining in this state semifinal game. Ian Kipp checking back in. Back of the iron. Mm. Key runs it down. Three. Front of the iron. Chacon will be whistled for a foul in the backcourt. So we mentioned Centerville. Three losses on the year. They lost by a point to Miamisburg. They lost early in the year by 13 to Moeller, who they came back and beat in the regional final, and they lost to St. Vincent St. Mary, who's going to be playing for a Division II state title uh, tomorrow. So they, they played a challenging schedule, Yep. and it is showing off at the right time of the year for head coach Brooks Cups and his team as uh, Coach Cups has to be happy with the way his guys came out and played. You know, and especially uh, the type of year we had with the pandemic, Dave, you know, that schedule, he, he got a lot of games in, and I think that's important as well. But you mentioned the strength of schedule pays big dividends when you get to this point. Centerville has not trailed in this ball game. They came out ready to go and dictating tempo. Chacon can't knock down the three. And they have looked every bit the part of a team that has earned the right to play for a state championship. Well, if they are fortunate to continue on here and win this state semifinal game, whoever they play will have the challenge of uh, guarding a very efficient offense because offensively, the Elks do a wonderful job passing the ball. Yep. They put a lot of pressure on your defense. They're long and athletic inside. Yep. And they have a point guard in Brooks Cups who can get it done as well. I'm sorry, Gabe Cups. Brooke, Brooke Cups is the head coach, uh, the dad of the point guard. And the aforementioned Gabe Cups checking back in. He has four fouls. Two twenty-nine remaining. And for Menor, they just could never get any type of rhythm going. 
Chacon inside gets the bucket. Nice job breaking the pressure. Yeah, we've seen that all night long. Just an excellent job, well prepared for what they were going to see. Free throws coming for Tom House. And we mentioned Menner comes into this game as the only unbeaten team in the state. Certainly not the way the Cardinals thought this was going to unfold as House rattles in that first one. Well, we, we, you've been around this game long enough to know there are some some games where you just cannot. You're going to have nights yeah. like this. You know, yeah. and I, I feel for uh, Luke Chacon. You know, he's uh, had a, a wonderful career here with the Cardinals. 68 and 9 overall as a player in this program. But this is not exactly how you want to go out. But uh, there's Key again right to the basket. Stephen Key has been outstanding. The, uh, the senior now, 21 points. You get the steal and the quick bucket. And another steal. Wags puts it in. Don't look now, 10 point game, still 138 remaining. Can't go to sleep right now. Nope. Can't listen to me either. <laughs> Free throws coming for the Elks. But I think that, that sequence right there, Dave, kind of gives you the idea how Mentor averaged so many points per game in terms of what they tried to do, keeping pressure up, really kind of dominating teams in that full court look. Uh, oh boy, just uh, one of those nights, but uh, still an opportunity here. Well, and, and the other thing that we didn't talk about, because of the pandemic, teams like Mentor and, and Centerville weren't able to play in the big gyms and arenas, so this is a different look. You never know. It, does that affect an outside shot? Well, it's going to affect different players different ways. It, it does. It does. And, uh, you know, the background's a little bit different from that standpoint there. But, uh, you know, it's one of those things where shooting is such a fickle thing. It just it drives you nuts. And yep. If it was easy, everybody, everybody would be able to do it. Got that right. Yeah, that's a good foul right there because that would have been an easy layup there on the quick pass to the inside. Foul whistled on Gray. Two free throws coming for Centerville. And it will be Ryan Kiefer who gets to shoot the free throws. Wanted to make sure it was Kiefer they were going to award the free throws to. Ninth season as head coach at Centerville for Brooke Cups, 160 and 76 with the Elks. First time in the state final four and 122 away from playing in the state championship mm -hmm. game for the first time as well. And again, you know, first time, remember that's you've got all those Cincinnati schools in that region that you got to battle through oh, to get yeah. out. It's a brutal, brutal right. region. Key to the hoop, and he has played extremely well. Quick time out there for Mentor. 23 for Key. He's played extremely well. He's been the motor to this basketball team here this evening for the Cardinals. 10 of 17 from the field, 23 points for Key, three rebounds. One fourteen remaining. Centerville's lead now nine. Again, Menner has never led in this game. And really, it, it hasn't been tied either. There, there's the look at what Stephen Key has done for the Menner Carter. Uh, he's laid it on the line tonight, the senior. Possibly playing this last game as a as a Cardinal really done a wonderful game. This one we talked about during the course of the first half. They 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 were in it, just they could never get over the yep. hump a little bit to kind of get it to that four or five mark. It's always been maybe eight, nine, ten point margin. They were never getting good looks. That first half they didn't get 
many good looks at the basket either. And credit that to Centerville's defense. Kip whistled for the foul. That's his fourth, so Kip has four, Color has four, and Wag fouled out earlier in this fourth quarter. Good look at Quinn Hafner, Jr. Back of the arm. So he is 0 for 3 from the free throw line in this game as Hafner. That's when, uh, as a coach, you're just kind of looking like, what? what's going on here? Those are, those are yeah. the ones in a tight game. They're going to be the difference maker. Wow. Just hoping to try to get one to go down right here. And, the, you know, the, again, to get back to the sight line, thing, he came into this game 9 of 10 from the free throw line. Mm -hmm. So that's, it affects different players different ways. The space behind the backboard, if you will. 10-point Centerville lead. Color trying to adjust. Key will take the three. Over the rim, rebound gathered by House. They break the pressure. House will go to the line. Yep, good decision right there by Tom House. Great decision. You, right now, the clock is the main thing you want to keep running if you're center goal. They've been impressed with Tom House, 15 points, nine rebounds. Really good defense, presence inside. Knocks down both free throws. Back to a 12 point lead for Centerville. Key. Just still tough to find shots right now. Turnover. Yep. Roll. Tip in by House. Oh, House now the good. double double. Yep. Key. Foul. Two free throws coming for Stephen Key. 22.5 remaining. And Centerville will be playing for the state championship tomorrow night against the winner of our second game, Westerville Central and St. Ignatius. Mm -hmm. That'll start at 8 o'clock. Well, they earned this victory. They sure did. They played extremely well. I thought offensively they were very efficient in what they were trying to do. But more importantly, defensively, they, they shut down a team that was averaging close to 87 points per game and uh, hold them well below their average. That's for sure. House. And right now, House says let's pull it out. And he's it's going to lead the celebration as Centerville will play for a Division I state basketball championship coming up tomorrow at 8.30. The Centerville Elks, impressive. And House. Well, nice. Yep. Nice bit of sportsmanship there by Luke Chacon, who kind of went up to house and pat him on the back and said, hey, you all played well. That's what you got to do sometimes. You're going to have nights like this. Yep. It's always difficult. So Tom House, 20 and 10. 20 points, 10 rebounds. Rolf with 11 rebounds. And Centerville out rebounds the Mentor Cardinals 37 to 14. There's the story of your game. Yep. That's that's how you end up with this 62-49 lead for the Elks. 
Also helps that you shoot the ball pretty well for Centerville. Yeah, and that, that helps a ton too. You always look a little bit better, both as players and coaches, when you're shooting the ball well. But I think the rebounding piece, I'm sure if we uh, had a chance to talk to Coach Cubs, one of the top priorities for the game was probably rebounding, making sure they controlled the glass, and they surely did that here this evening. Centerville has earned the right to play in the state championship basketball game for the first time in program history. Dave Sicuti, final thought on this one. Well, I just thought the efficiency offensively for Centerville, Dave, was big, and it set the tempo for the game from the start. They executed well. They put a lot of pressure on the defense for Mentor, but even more importantly, at the defensive end, boy, they were really strong. They shut down one of the best players in the state of Ohio, Luke Chacon, had a real tough night in terms of his shooting performance, but uh, you know, it's one of those games. You get a chance to move on. That's what you want to try to do. Survive, advance. And you mentioned the defense of Centerville. They hold Menor to a low for the season, 49 points. Our final score, Centerville, 63, Menor, 49. Tune in at 8 p.m. for the other Division I state semifinal between Westerville Central and St. Ignatius right here on Spectrum News 1, your television home for high school sports. For Dave Sicuti and the entire Spectrum News 1 crew, I'm Dave Bacon. We will see you in a little bit from the University of Dayton Arena. I'm a lawyer. If you've been injured in an auto accident and it's not your fault, call me. And remember, auto get paid unless you get paid.